Hey, this is Zach at NV Woodworks. Today we're gonna to be upgrading my old bandsaw crosscut sled. Uh, we're gonna add some T-Track to it and even do some custom resin cast flip stops. I'm pretty excited, so let's jump into this project. All right, so first I just wanna stop and say that this old sled still works fine. It's served me well for many years. It still works today. My only gripe about it is the, the stop system that I use is a clamp and an old pin blank cutoff. And it works fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. But, you know, this thing's kind of two-handed. I got to mess with it two-handed. And then even once it's on there, this clamp is sticking off, hitting me in the stomach. It's just not awesome. Uh, another thing that I would really like is I'd like to have stops that flip out of the way because there's a lot of things that I do repeatedly. I use this for a lot of things always the same length of, of certain, you know, cuts. And so if I could just mount my stops and then flip them out of the way if I'm doing a one-off, that would be a lot easier. So kind of one of those things, just a little bit of convenience is what I want out of this next one. So the way to do that, I figured I have some T-Track laying around. I got this at Rockler. Uh, I'm gonna use this. I did find there is an issue with the way that this is gonna work. I thought that I could just mount any of these flip stops and they would work. The problem is it doesn't, it's, it's actually meant to be like a, an, a vertical fence. And so I have this longer flip stop that fits pretty well on the top, but it's not really meant for short things like this. So I'm going to make my own flip stop basically. It's very simple to, to make something custom. Uh, and I thought I'd take it one step further. I'm going to mold or, or model the thing in MDF, which is really easy to work with. And then I'm gonna make a silicone mold and then we'll cast some resin cast custom flip stops. It should be pretty awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use one of these flip stops. I have this one, it mounts, it works well with this. It's really kind of made for this. It's a Rockler item as well. I'm gonna use the base piece that mounts to my fence and I'm just gonna create a custom flip stop. So what I've done is I've actually modeled it or, or you know created the thing out of MDF. And this is going to be used as a master so that I can create a silicone mold and then we can cast resin flip stops, custom ones, you know, any color you want, any kind of, you know, whatever. So that'll be kind of a neat uh, little addition to this fence. So it makes, you know, doing the extra work to get this thing to, to work the right way. Uh, a little bit more, you know, worth it. I think it's pretty cool. So let's get things going. There's very few parts. I have my, my T-Track. I'm going to need a base. I'm just going to go with a, a brand new piece of wood. Um, so I need a base piece of wood. I need a runner. And I think that's about it, honestly, uh, just to make the sled. They're very simple to make. I don't really worry about super, super accuracy. I'm going to get everything, you know, squared up to the blade uh, pretty well, but I don't really care. It's generally just kind of rough cross cuts that I use this for. So uh, let's get everything kind of going.
All right, so I got my mold in the oven. It's been in there for about 20, 30 minutes. It's nice and toasty. And I figured out that this is gonna take about half of one of these cups. And so if you wanna see my video on how to estimate how much resin you need for a mold, uh, check that out. It's uh, The link is on the screen and down in the show notes. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go for a two color mix. I'm gonna go for purple and red. I thought that'd be kind of neat. I just wanted to see what it looked like. Uh, so for the purple, we're gonna use my blue to purple color shift powder. And then for red, we're gonna use the wine red from P-Town Subby. And I'm gonna add just one little drop of dye, purple dye, in with the, the blue to purple color shift powder to give it kind of that dark base. So let's get our resin mixed up and let's just go for it. All right, we got it all poured and it is in the pressure pot. Now we just have to wait and see how it turned out. If you're excited to see how this thing turned out, hit that like button down below. So uh, I'm gonna let it sit overnight in the pressure pot. I'm kind of running to the end of the day. I would have let it sit at least four hours anyway and I don't have that, that many hours in the shop before I go home. Uh, but a lot of times for smaller, you know, smaller castings like that, stuff that is less than 100 grams or so, let's, let's just say, uh, or, you know, thin things or something like that. A lot of times with the Lumalite Clear Slow Set, I'll just let it sit overnight just to make sure everything's cured up and it'll demold really easy. So for now, let's go over and build the rest of the bandsaw sled and then tomorrow we'll demold the, the flip stop and see how it works.
All right, so we got all our parts ready and it's time to start assembling. Now I cut this into two because I don't want to run my wood blade into the, the, the T-Track stuff. So um, we're gonna mount two separate little fences. I'm gonna get everything aligned and then bolt it down. And then I actually found some pre-made, I, I had already made these probably when I made the first bandsaw sled because they're exactly perfect. Um, it's just walnut, I'm gonna use these for runners. Um, so let's head over to the bandsaw, let's get all these little goodies assembled, um, and I'll kind of explain what I'm going to do with the T-Track. Originally I was just going to screw it down, um, I was kind of talking about that where, where particle board's not the most, you know, it doesn't hold screws that well. And it occurred to me that one of the things that I want to be able to do with this is, is use one of these clamps. Well, when you're tightening this clamp down, it's pulling the T-Track up, and if all you have is screw threads holding it down, that's not really very strong, you could easily rip it out. So we're gonna do uh, the bolt it together, kind of like uh, for, for anybody that has a table saw with a miter gauge, if you've ever mounted a wood fence to it, it's gonna be the same way where you're using the kind of T-slot material and a bolt to securely fasten everything down. Much better way, it's gonna be super strong and everything will work great. Plus, I don't even have to drill into this stuff or mess around with it. It just, it all works because it's T-track. All right, so we got a bandsaw sled. It's looking pretty good. Everything went together easily. I mean, it's not that hard to make this kind of thing. Uh, now, I like the adjustability of this. If I find that it's not really cutting square and I need to make adjustments, I don't need to you know, pull screws out, move the thing, and, and mess around that way. I can just you know, loosen the bolts, make adjustments, and you know, if, if maybe the, the, I need to account for blade drift or something like that, um, I can fully adjust this thing. It's nice, but it's also really rock solid, you know, tight on here. Uh, I'm not gonna have to worry about those hold downs, ripping, you know, screw threads out or anything like that. Uh, pretty happy, it's pretty nice. It's nice and hefty too. The, the aluminum plus the, the particle board compared to the MDF is all much heavier. So it's just, it feels solid on here. I'm super stoked. So at this point, all I gotta do is make my zero clearance cut. And then the other thing is we need to pull the, the flip stop out of the pressure pot and see how that works. I'm super stoked about that. So let's head over to the pressure pot. I'm gonna wait for the first cut. I wanna see how this flip stop works before we do any cutting yet. Uh, so let's pull that out of the pressure pot and see how we did. All right, guys, before we pull it out, I just wanted to thank my two newest top-level patrons over on Patreon, Rick Cooper and Brent Miller. Thank you guys for supporting the show at the top level. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to help support the show and get access to the live streams, the monthly Q&A hangout, and extra bonus content, uh, head over to patreon.com slash nvwoodworks. We'd love you to join the Patreon family. All right, so let's get this thing pulled out of the pressure pot.
All right, so we got ourselves a custom flip stop. I took the, the drill bit. There's a little bit of flashing on the inside of the hole, but everything fits now. The bolt fits in there nicely. Um, the one thing is this top surface has some crusties and stuff. I need to clean that up. I just want to uh, kind of square that up on the, the disc sander probably. Um, there's a little bit of flashing on this front piece. And so just, just clean things up. It's a little dull looking. I didn't do a whole lot of work on the MDF Master. I just kind of sanded it a little bit. So it's a little bit dull. If I want to, I can come back with UV resin or something like that. Just put a little quick gloss coat on, hit it, and it'll be nice and shiny. So let's go sand this thing up, get it all cleaned up, and mount it onto our fence. All right, so I got it all smoothed up. Everything's looking pretty good. Uh, I, I just did a really quick sanding job. I'm gonna have to go back and take out some of the scratches, but for now, let's just see how this guy works. Put the bolt in, it's got a little washer. Tighten this guy up. Try and keep it tight, but with a little bit of friction. All right, and I usually use this side. Slide her down, lock it, and flip it down. We got a nice flip stop. Look at that. It flips out of the way. It doesn't flip all the way back. I could have cleaned this up a little bit more, taken more material off to let it lay flat, but it gets out of the way. That's all that I needed. So why don't we give it a test? All right, so there you have it. I got myself a new bandsaw sled. I'm super happy with this thing. It's gonna be one of those tools or, or things that just puts a smile to my face every time I use it because it's souped up now. It's really cool. So I really love this flip stop. That's gonna add you know, the functionality that I wanted, but the resin casting part of this was just really awesome. I'm really glad that, I'm kind of glad that I ran into an issue where I thought, okay, so what am I gonna have to do? And I'm thinking wood. And then I went, well, I could just make resin ones, you know, make a wood master and, you know, make whatever the heck I want with whatever colors. So it just goes to show you, hopefully this is a good example of, you know, you can do so many things with resin. This is why I love resin casting. Um, a lot of things, you know, that maybe, like even, even if you didn't need to modify this, um, I could have taken, if I was gonna use that original, uh, flip stop that it came with, I mean, really, I can make a, a silicone mold of this and create a custom one, even if this worked perfectly. So you don't always have to just stick with whatever they gave you. And if you need to modify stuff, resin may be a good way to go. Who knows? So hopefully you enjoyed seeing this come together. If you have any questions about anything, I'll try to answer them down in the comments. Uh, one little thing about the sled that I wanted to mention before we go. Uh, it's kind of getting, a, it's a little sticky in the middle of this T-Track. This bandsaw table is kind of warped. Uh, I think this fence system is just way too heavy for it. Uh, but I'm going to add a little bit of paste wax and that should make it, you know, glide really smooth. But it's, it's nice and tight in there. It doesn't really have a whole lot of play. 
So very happy with this thing. So if this is your first time on my channel, we do all kinds of resin casting projects, tips and tricks and experiments around here. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little notification bell so you get notified when new videos get posted as well as when I go live. Uh, we do live streams every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. So if you wanna catch some in action live uh, resin casting, definitely stop by. And if you're thinking about getting into resin casting but you're not really sure where to begin, check out my ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Resin Casting. It answers all those beginner questions like what do I need to get started how does it all work? It'll help you get over that initial learning curve so you can get in your shop and start doing some resin cast projects of your own. It's available on my website if you're interested. So until next time guys, thanks for watching this video and happy casting!